is an unspoiled network podcast. This is Unspoiled covering The Dark Tower, Book Six, Song of Susanna, Stanzas One and Two, Beam Quake, and The Persistence of Magic. In these stanzas, fuck you. Stanzas now? We can't just, just fucking have chapters, dude. That's all I'm asking, for Christ's sake. Also, don't you dare try and leave Oi behind. Welcome to Unspoiled. Oh man, I started reading this again, and I was like, oh shit, I promised her regular chapters. <laughs> you fucking liar. And they are regular chapters, they're just called stanzas. They're just called stanzas, like, guy, listen, he needs to fucking chill. <laughs> I don't know why he has this weird obsession with not just, like, it's, there's nothing about them that makes it feel like it deserves to be called something else. Yeah, and there's just no, like... I, the only thing that maybe makes it so is the weird little call-and-response song parts at the end of all, every chapter. And, like, right. these just and add... And they don't add anything. They add nothing. <laughs> don't add jack shit. I'm just gonna say it. Like, and I don't want this to come across as, like... Oh, don't try and be different. Like right. that's not you can try you can do whatever you want and it may or may not work and it did not work is how <laughs> I feel right now. Um I just I don't know, there's just this kind of feeling of just almost like it, it almost <laughs> Okay, so there I'm gonna reference this. Hi everyone, I'm Natasha. Oh way. yeah, I'm Miles. Um, and I'm going to reference something from Sex and the City real quick. And there's I am not going to get it. <laughs> there's a point where she is at a party, and it's this really hoity-toity, upper-class, Upper East Side New York party. And she asks for a glass of red wine, and the waiter says, I'm sorry, the hostess does not serve any brown liquor at her parties. Can <laughs> I get you something clear? And <laughs> Carrie's like, are you serious? And she turns to her date and says, it's like she's actively trying to cultivate eccentricities to hide the fact that she has no personality. <laughs> and that's how I feel. It's like, you are writing a crazy fucking series here, dude. You don't need to to put all this shit on top of it. You know, it's like those milkshakes you get where they have a straw through an entire slice of cake. Yeah, it's like when... Going into the milkshake? You don't need that cake, yo! Just give me the fucking milkshake! Yeah, it's like trimming your, like, your beard. Like, for me, like, trimming a beard, you know? Sometimes you just go overboard, right? And, like, sometimes when you go too far overboard, you're just like, fuck, now I have to shave the whole thing. Yes. Yes. That's what it's like. <laughs> All I of you out will there who have go shaved with it. beards, you know, you know what I'm talking about. All of you out there who have had to cultivate and sculpt your facial hair... <laughs> I just, you know, it just really feels like I could understand doing something like this if you were kind of, you know, a, you know, inexperienced, self-published writer who's going, just going to, just being too extra with everything and trying to do this thing and you're like, oh, sweetie, and you pat them on the hand and you're like, you don't need this, but I understand that you're a little bit, you have a confidence problem and so you're overcompensating. But he should not have that. So I don't know what he's trying to do here. Um, also, everyone, I really want to apologize. If I sound weird, I had some kind of allergic reaction to something. And it, what's cracking me up is that this happened while I was drinking water. So <laughs> apparently I'm allergic to water. But Would it my, not explain a couple of things? Honestly, I, my whole life would make so much more sense. <laughs> but my lips swelled up. So, um... 
I'm like opening my mouth as as far as I normally do to speak, but it's really not as wide as it sh- as it needs to be with my big swollen lips. And so my voice might sound kind of weird, but I'm trying to open it more to compensate. And then I just sound kind of crazy because <laughs> I sound like I'm just yelling. Um, so I'm sorry if I sound strange. Hopefully throughout the course of this podcast, they will uh, chill out a little bit and deflate themselves. Um, so, yeah. So this book, again... Can we fucking get to Susanna, please, for the love of all that's holy? <laughs> oh, my God. We ended the last one, and I'm like, I still didn't get any Susanna, and I yeah. just really want to know what the fuck, and I know that we're going to get to her. I'm sure that we will, but I'm getting really irate now. I had forgotten that it had taken this long. Like, in my memory, um, there was one chapter at the beginning where they talk to the Manny in the cave, and then they do the ritual and send them through. And, like, that's that. And I had forgotten that there was so much other shit going on. Like, there isn't... This is, you know, kind of in keeping with the way that King doesn't often seem to know where the parts of the story properly begin and end. This is mm-hmm. a a farewell to the Kala, essentially, to start things right. off. Which is fine, but, like, maybe at the end of the last book? And not here? Yeah, you know, like, this, honestly, the way this goes, where they get sucked into portals of that open very quickly. And a great ending, this right? does not go, yeah, this doesn't go the way that they planned. That's a fucking ending. Yeah. This was, this just, I don't know, it's just a, I'm, I really would like to like sit down with King and talk to him about the way that he wrote these and how far apart they were and how far apart his ideas came. Like, you know, the end of the third book with Blaine, he really didn't know how he was going to fix it. Right. Right. He felt like he had written himself into a corner and then he came up with the Eddie Dean thing. Um, And I would like to know if he just didn't know what he was going to do. And that's why that book ended in such an awkward spot because it doesn't feel right. And, for this one to start off, and it's called fucking Song of Susanna, and I've already been away from Susanna way too long in the last book, to tease me like that, and then start it out with literally all dudes. Like... I mean, Rosa. Rosa comes up and fucks Roland, whoop de doo And also, and like, about it. wins at cards all night long, which I kind of love. Right. Because every... The real impression I got from that was that everybody was so damn distracted that they were just like, I don't know, whatever, yeah, you won. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I just, uh, find this to be a strange spot to begin. I agree. This would have made a really good ending. And then the next chapter is called Mia and Trudy. Is that it? Uh, I believe so. Yes. Um, so hopefully we're going to get with them and find out what the hell's going on there. If Trudy is like yet a fourth, fifth, fifth personality, I'm going to go ahead and (laughs) sign right off. (laughs) And uh, see y'all podcast on over. some other podcasts, because <laughs> I am not here for another one showing up. Good God Almighty! Oh, fair enough. Um, yeah, I, I, I will. I will tell you that you'll be getting Susanna in that chapter. So thank God. Um, or at least, at least her physically. I don't remember if she's there mentally or not. To be honest, um, but That's fair. It is interesting though. You brought up, you know, like whether or not he knew. And it's interesting, because I... If you look at... Um, this is a thing that I've been kicking around in my head, and I actually am probably going to write up soon. I, I've done a little bit of work on it already, um, in terms of a written article. But... Um, in terms of... Uh, writing speed... King in the Dark Tower series is almost, he was almost the anti-Martin because there's, so Gunslayer comes out in 82, right? Okay. Five years later, you get Drawing of the Three in 87. Takes four years for the Wastelands in 91, and then another six years for Wizard and Glass in 97, right? Okay. Then dude gets hit by the car and you get, you again, there's a five year break, or I'm sorry, a six year break. 
between 97 and Wolves of the Kala, which comes out in 03. So Wolves of the Kala comes out in 03. Song of Susanna comes out in 04. And The Dark Tower, the final book, also comes out in 04. Damn. So when he decided to finish the series, he fucking finished the series. I wonder if he did that thing... Oh, I keep talking about this book like you've read it, and it's not you that I covered it with. Um, the In the Bag of Bones book, Yeah, it's about an author, and he, like, banks books and doesn't tell his publishers that he's written another one and holds on to it in case he hits a dry spell where he can't come up with any ideas mm. so that he still has something that he can, like, give them. And I'm wondering if he just, like, banked books and then was like, here's two. Ha. Fuck you. I don't think um, so. In which because... case, the structure of these endings is even more egregious. <laughs> yeah, like... no, I really, from what I've heard about his process during this time, it seems like they just kind of came to him. Um, but, uh, and you know, we could talk about, we don't have to have this whole conversation right now if you don't want to, but it's just interesting, the point, is that he, he did, you know, he flew through these yeah. in like less than two years. These three books. So... That's crazy. Anyway, let's uh, let's get these dudes out of the way before, yes, so that we can dudes. just fucking move on to the person we're all here to see. <laughs> um, so we start off with Eddie, Jake, uh, Roland, Callahan, and Oi, and Rosa, I think, um, in the uh, Mani like meeting place, wherever they are. Where are they? Oh, they're in the they're rectory. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> so they're in the rectory, and um, Henshik and this dude named Cantab, who's, I guess, one of his step-grandsons? <laughs> okay. I had said he married one of Henshik's grand- granddaughters. So, okay. Um, we start off with them, and Roland and Eddie are essentially inquiring as to whether or not there's still some magic left by the door, and if the Mani could help them open it. Right. Which is a pretty interesting, like, prospect, but I'm just, like, I'm really surprised at some of, like, the problems that I'm running into here in terms of the end of the last book and the beginning of this one, because the Mani are just not defined for me in any way. The most we got was from uh, What's-Her-Face that died and her being kind of exiled Margaret Eisenhower, yeah. And that's all we got other than, like, a throwaway line in practically the first book, I think? There have been one or two throwaway lines involving the Mani over the course of the series, but nothing definitive. Yeah. So I've just felt really like, all right, I guess we're going to meet them eventually and find out what that deal is. But then they get kind of thrown at us here with no introductions and no explanations. And... It's just, it's, I just find it really frustrating that all of the shit that I want to know about, King is shortcutting on. Mm. And then the stuff that I could really do without, he's digging in on. Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? I just, I don't know. I'm feel. I, I think I'm having even less patience for this stuff too recently because of Twin Peaks. I just finished the, fir- the third season finally. And to say that that show did the same thing is an understatement. He basically took the least interesting shit, expanded on that times ten, and then took the things that actually gave a shit about and just threw, flushed them down the fucking toilet. Oh, man. So, I have a bug up my ass because of that. And so, this book is starting to tick me off because now my patience is wearing thin from another thing. So, maybe I'm being unfair. Um, But... Yeah, I just, like, the the money or something that I've kind of wanted to know more about. I've been interested. I've been ready. And then they just got dropped in my lap here with no explanation of, like, what, why did Roland go to them? How do we know that they can, why, you know, like, it's just, it's weird to me that we start off with Roland in the middle of asking them this question instead of, starting where we left the last book off and him explaining to Eddie, I bet the money could help us. And Eddie being like, why do you think that? And he's like, well, here's why. Right. And then we get a little bit of background too, because it's sort of like in, you know, 
in Harry Potter, where Harry doesn't know anything, and so we get an introduction to the wizarding world because everything's being explained to him. Is how I feel like Eddie would be the a perfect audience surrogate, or Jake even better, and or Jake, and probably better because he's a child, and I do need this explained to me as if I am a small child, right? But instead, that's not an insult on you. Mid conversation, like no, I no, I get it. <laughs> but instead, we're mid conversation, and <clears throat> they're already half done talking about this and then we just go and start which normally i'm all about all right let's just go and start but none of this means anything to me because i don't know why they're doing any of it the first line of the book is dialogue roland asking henchick how long will the magic stay which is definitely a weird place to enter into this conversation because in order to understand why he's asking that question you need to know that he's with the Manny, and apparently there's still some magic left in the door, and they want to know how long it'll be there. So they can potentially use it. Mm-hmm. Um, the the Manny in general, like, I feel like they're super ill-defined, mm-hmm. but I feel like the one thing we do know about them is that they're travelers. Like, that's kind sure. of the thing that's been impressed upon us it as much as the throwaway lines can impress anything upon us is that these are weird guys and people think they're weird because they go places. Right. You know, so like, so for me, I think it was kind of more like, Oh, like, okay, I guess if you're going to, you know, what are you going to do in this situation? And we have to go through a door and there's no magic there. I guess you would go to the only people in town who might, not give you a completely blank stare when you say, how long will the magic stay? (laughs) Um, Right. But, that said, I I do totally agree that it's like, it's a weird place to start. And it's, it's weird to jump us into this and then, you know, and then he's like, alright, well, and then they all got together and they had their plum bobs and, you know, here's the description of them. And, like, I liked it. Like, mm-hmm. I liked watching the Manny do their thing. It was kind of neat. And I liked watching them kind of, like, slap Eddie down for being a dick. <laughs> you know, like, that was kind of fun. Um, but it is just, like, it's it's going into weird details, like, you know, what they use to work their magic, and completely ignoring anything of, like, why do they have magic, and how did they learn to use it, and who are they? Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, and, like, you know, when I say that I want to know about them, I don't mean that I need some, like, half-book-long fucking backstory about the founding of the Manny. Like, I just <laughs> want literally any explanation at all. Like, even Jake is, like, watching them take these coffers out with the equipment in it. And it's like, that doesn't look like very Christian symbols. And then he's like, well, why do I think they're even Christian? Is it just because they dress like Quakers? And I'm like, holy shit, Jake knows as much as I do about these yeah, guys. Yeah, exactly. Like, it's just, and like you said, I, I like to watch them do their weird thing with their plumb lines and pendulums and yeah. weird wizard staffs. I just made that up. <laughs> Um, but I don't, it's not as much fun as it could be if I knew what the fuck was going on even a little bit. I mean, it's not like Stephen King would ever, like, drop a page long paragraph of exposition in the middle of a book. Right? Like, explaining some concept that we'd never heard of before now. And acts like it's totally just a given. And, well, I, what do you mean? I mentioned this before. Uh, no, you didn't. Anyway. And I'm going to continue to mention it all the time. Well, now all it's annoying. All the time. All the it's, fucking time. It's going to be my framing device for my next book. Ugh. Anyway. Um, but, yeah, so the manniers are a thing that I just really... I want to know what the fuck. They don't let them click clip their nails more than once a year weird shit like that why though they hold hands because it's the manny way uh-huh. like they're, they're okay. just hanging out they're just like hold hands i i like i assume it's a cultural thing of like we open doors into other worlds for a living let's not get lost <laughs> that's probably true actually yeah. I like that just like oh hold my hand buddy <laughs> 
Um, well, holding hands is a sacred act and not at all something totally practical. And I understand about, like, them putting Eddie in his place a little bit when he's starting to be a dick, but also, like, Eddie's flipping the fuck out, guys. Yeah, seriously. Like, just give him a fucking break, just for a second. You know, he's, he's, he just disappeared and he's had to sit on his hands for like 10 hours. Yeah, because you superstitious <sighs> douchebags won't go up there after dark. And like, I get the whole thing where it's like, also, they're like really old men and we don't want to go up there after dark because they're going to die. <laughs> but I could totally get Eddie's frustration there. Yeah. He is being kind of like, the thing that I enjoyed is when he shows up and he looks at the door and he's like, no, I just know it. The magic is gone. You're... What do you say? I'm a fool and so are you. Or you're a fool and so am I or something. And at that point you're like, all right, Eddie. Chill the right. fuck out, man. Like, let them do their thing. This is what they do. Like, be a more stable person right now. Although that is just such a dick thing to say to somebody at this moment. Yes, it is. Guys, like, you don't need him to be stable. Just keep doing your own thing then. Like, just, you don't, they don't, whatever. It's fine. Yeah. Um, so they wind up basically being like, oh, hey, Jake's got the touch, so we're going to put him right fucking in front of the door. Yeah. And Great plan. just go for it and hope that, uh, he can open it twice. <laughs> okay. I guess that's what we're doing. And, um, it's really really sad because he says goodbye to oi and oi apparently knows like exactly what's going on even though jake is or roland's over here hoping that he does he's it. just imitating jake yeah but of course he knows what's going on give me a break um but it turns out that oi is not to be uh separated from his homie nope because he is gonna come out there when he hears his bro screaming, even though he can't do shit about it, because that's what friends do. It's and... just more King fucking with you, trying to think he's getting rid of Oi when he's not. Yep. Which, I saw that shit coming. I knew he wasn't gone, you <laughs> goddamn liar. Uh... Um, so... Also, uh, like, one of the beams fell down and shit, so we should probably talk about that. Yeah, so... Okay. <laughs> Hi. Here's another one. <laughs> uh Oh, you know, minor earthquake. I guess the breakers uh finally snapped that beam. Oh, y oh, is that what you guess? <laughs> you guess the breakers snapped that beam, do you? When as far as I knew, nobody but you and Ben Sleitman senior even knew about that whole deal because they didn't know where the wolves even came from or what they were taking or what they needed from these twins. But now all of a sudden we're just talking about them breaking the beam. Like everybody knows what it's about. And the guys here from the money seem to know. Yeah. Which is again with them. They're like, Oh, you know, we heard the quake last night. We surmise that one of the beams has collapsed. Right. And I'm like, if you guys knew what the fuck was going on, you maybe could have helped this town figure anything out. If you had yeah. any information, but what? You just decided to, like, sit on that because you didn't think that it would help at all? How do you fucking know? Their relationship with the give town them is... the information. Their relationship with the town is super weird. It's like... Yeah, they, apparently. Henchik, is, Henchik calls everybody who aren't the money the forgetful folk. Right. And apparently excommunicated his daughter for having the balls to marry one of them. Mm hmm And it's like, well, then why are you here? Like, what do you, what purpose do you serve for this community? And if you're travelers, then why do you hang out here? Mm-hmm. Lots of questions. I don't know. It feels like, it feels like, again, I, you know, I have to assume all of this because we don't get any information, but it kind of feels like in... Roland's world, like, a lot of towns just kind of, like, have their money clans, you know? That's, yeah, that's, like, the impression that I got was that they're just around in the background, like, kind of, like, I don't even know, like, um, the an initial comparison I keep making is, like, Jehovah's Witnesses. Yeah, yeah. Where every community has, like, you know, one 
church. Are they called a church or a temple for Jehovah's Witnesses? It's a church still, right? I think it's a church. I don't really know, though. Um, And you tend to see the same couple people banging on doors over and over again. Like, it's not like there's so many that you don't recognize people. But they don't really move on. And that's why it's so weird to me that he's like, well, they travel a lot. I'm like, do they? Because, I mean... It's just not the impression that I had been getting from the way that he talked about them earlier. And I just can't help but feel like he's just dropping some shit on me now because now he feels like, oh, you know what? I need this. Right. So ignore what I said. Yeah, it does feel that way in in a lot of ways. So um, running back real quick through some stuff from the earlier parts. Uh, Callahan is kind of having an existential crisis or continuing to have one, I should say. Mm-hmm. Um He's just holding this this copy of Salem's Lot in his hand and wondering what the hell. No picture of the man on the back. Only a cursory description because it was like his second novel published. And he's wondering what makes this thing so valuable, which I thought was weird. Like, you know, I don't know. What was weird? My fine thing that was weird was, and they were quite well reviewed if one were to believe the excerpts or whatever it said. And I was just like, oh, fucking king. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, but wait, what did you think was weird that he's worried about, like, why it's worth so much? I guess a little bit just because I'm like, well, clearly he got famous, man. Like, mm-hmm. I, re- I get that you don't remember ever having heard of him, but we're dealing in all their worlds now and you're part of this now. And you need to accept the fact that there's, like, some universe where this guy is famous, and that's why this book is important. Well, that's the thing, though. Like, that isn't necessarily true. Books can be worth a ton because there was only, like, one printing, and it was, like, critically reviled, and so they never printed it again. Or there was one printing, and the author suddenly up and died, and nobody was able to get a hold of the manuscript, and it went up in flames. And And actually, they do go over that in the last book during Eddie's conversation with Tower, so that's very true. Oh, yeah, I forgot about that. Um... So yeah, I think he's just like in general wondering because if that if he gets more of a clue about that, then it might give him more of a clue about how the fuck this guy found out about his life or invented it or God knows what. Yeah, I guess it just threw me off because it says it had been covered in protective plastic as valuable first editions often are. Okay. So it's like, okay, so that's why it's expensive, right? Because it's a valuable first edition? Gotcha. You know, anyway. Um... But the other thing about it is that Callahan is still not quite part of them, right? Like, he, he mostly is. Yeah, but I haven't this, really warmed up to this guy, man. There's this whole bit where he, like, tricks Jake into revealing that Susanna is still alive. Mm-hmm. And Jake gets super offended and is like, we don't do that. We're fucking Cotet. We don't trick people. Yeah. That are, like, part of us. You know. I didn't care for that. Yeah. Um, it's a low trick, sir. Unworthy which, of you. Which, by the way, Jake having the touch is kind of like... Is it getting out of hand yet? That's, you know, like, I keep on talking about Chris Tex being like, mm, you know what, there's a little bit too much um, deus ex machina in those books for me to really get behind them. And I really didn't used to agree with him but now i'm kind of like nah yeah you're right uh it seems like like jake is like kind of like his powers don't work in any way that makes sense it's just like it it they work however king needs them to work exactly like if i just don't define them then i can do whatever i want right which is fine it's just you know like when he's like when the the beam collapses and he's like, somebody says, how many beams are there? And he's like, oh, there are six. Mm-hmm. You know, and it's very clear that it's like he knows this because of the touch. And maybe he just, maybe Wait, he knows it because that... he read Roland's mind. Wasn't that Eddie who says that? I don't think so. I'm checking thought... now, though. I'm sorry, guys. Forgive us. Um, 
I know at one point he asks Eddie something about the beams because Eddie's the one who talks about the bear creature. Yeah, no, um, yeah, Jake says six beams connecting 12 portals. The 12 portals are the 12 ends of the earth. Roland's Ed- Roland, Eddie, and Susanna really started their quest from the portal of the bear and picked me up between there and Lud. Okay. Um, and he also says the great turtle's name is Matarin, so... That's cool. Oh, that's all him. Okay, yeah. Yeah, and and I, I do appreciate, though, that later on it sets up a little bit for Callahan um, when he has a little confrontation with Jake. <laughs> Callahan wondered if everyone in this damn story had the touch but him. <laughs> and then he's like... That's right, I forgot about that. And he's like, it's not a story. It's not a story. It's my life. But I can't really believe that because yeah. this book says fiction on it. Yeah, that is a fucked up thing. Yeah. I mean, he's just having a way more literal existential crisis than most of us have. But I think right. we all have those moments of, is any of this real? Yeah. Oh, yeah, for sure. Um, Roland and Rosa get down one more time, yeah. which is kind of a sweet scene between them. Um, and she warns him that if he doesn't finish the quest fast, whatever's happening in his limbs is going to catch up to him. Yeah. Um. I'm, I'm like, really not interested in a arthritic Roland. (laughs) Just don't do it. I don't want to see that. Also, Jake is suffering severe PTSD from Benny dying in front of him. And... (sighs) is really, really, like, murderously mad at the Tavery kid who got his ankle broken. Yeah, which, I mean, that's fair, buddy. (laughs) I really can't... Like, that's the kind of shit that I really have started to recognize in myself is that it... I will... And it's weird because I say that I recognize it in myself and I honestly don't even think... I'm as bad about it as most people because many, many people will seize on a concept of someone who is to blame for something, even though it is highly illogical, and they cling to that literally their entire lives. But when I have decided that somebody is responsible for something, God help me, but it is like impossible for me to let go of it. (laughs) And it, Not only to, like, let go of it, but to just forgive them, for God's sake. It's so hard for me. Even though sometimes I will come to kind of a realization that maybe it wasn't entirely their fault. But it's still, like, if I were in the position that Jake is in, I would be feeling exactly the fucking same way, to be honest. Because it does feel like this kid is the beginning of all of the dominoes going down. And it's not the kid's fault fault because he wouldn't have broken his fucking ankle if he could help it. Right. Like it's not like it's not like some somebody purposely dicking around and ruining something. It was genuinely a straight up accident. Yeah. But it's so it's still you just when it's something that's that dramatic of an event in someone's life, and it's somebody that was as close a friend as that kid was to Jake, even for that short time, I mean, how do you avoid holding resentment towards somebody when you can clearly identify their fuck-up as the moment where everything started to go wrong and it ends in the death of your best friend? Like, it's I don't really know, hard. man. It's like, it takes a better person than me. I'll just say that. <laughs> I'm not good at it. Well, that's fair. Um, yeah, I mean, it, 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 I totally, I get that, you know, and it's not mm-hmm. logical. And even if you, you know, he thinks to himself, like, I could have left him. You know, yeah. that's the worst part is that he could have left him there. Yeah. And like, and he's like, and then Benny would still be alive. But I really feel like if he had left him there, the plan wouldn't have worked, right? Um, or would they just would would both those kids have died? I think the kids would have died, and he would have been fine with it. I think yeah. is really like the unspoken thing there, which is more fucked up than anything. Is just you know him kind of being like, 
well, you know, better sacrifice those two than the one I care about. And we're kind of meant to side-eye him for that a little bit. Which, logically, I do. But emotionally, I completely understand. It's basically the same situation as everybody in town celebrating despite some really saddening losses because really in in total the losses weren't that bad man there was what they expected yeah they bring that up a couple of times which Mm -hmm. i was i'm like okay he must have heard something from somebody about this right because like a couple of times they're like yeah you know honestly we didn't lose hardly anyone and it's like yeah you didn't right um i just had while you were talking i had this weird like flash of like because you know how uh, Francine Tavery, the the female twin, was kind of, you know, looking at Jake, like looking at Jake, you know, oh, earlier. Yeah, that's in, so in weird. Wolves. I forgot about that. I just had this like weird vision of like Jake being stranded in the Kala while everybody else moves on, and like him getting together with her, and them having this really awful abusive relationship because of his hangups about her brother. Anyway, I don't know. That's just why why you do this. I don't know. I just you it do... happened. It happened in my brain. You stop it. Take it back. It's like just awful mutually abusive. Anyway, um, so moving on. Please do. <laughs> I beg you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, I mean, look, what they, they do the thing, and uh, Jake's in front, and they're all like yelling at him, like, no, you have to do this thing. And he's like, you put me in front, assholes. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't know what I'm doing. Yeah. Um, which they, they're just like, I guess it seems like it has to be one of them. Because what they say is, Hedgick is like, your boy is strong in the touch, so he'll be in front. It feels like it had to be one of them for some reason. I mean, I can't help but wonder how, if it hadn't been one of them, they would have even like been able to go through in time. Because it yeah. seems like the doors are open for like a split second. Um, I also really appreciate the fact that the uh, the beam quake or the magic leaving drove the voices insane. Oh yeah, what a weird concept, right? Yeah, yeah, I like that too. Um, but yeah, eventually it, it's it's tough, and you know, he th- there's a whole like goodbye scene with with Oi where it's never really explained why he can't go. That's another thing that bothers me. I'm not sure if it bothers that you fucking, or not. Like. B- the fact that he wound up being able to go anyway kind of made up for it a little bit because I otherwise Shit, was going to be called... <laughs> what just happened over there? Something fell over. It's all right. It's fine. Um, otherwise, I was going to call major bullshit on that because there is no explanation given as to why that would ever be a problem. It's What do they think? That Oi is like made out of some weird spirit stuff that will evaporate into like ectoplasm when he crosses through to the other side? Like... It, it, and if that is what you think, tell me that. Because otherwise, this just makes no sense. Yeah. Uh, it's, I mean, are they trying to protect him? I, they don't that, say. Uh, no. Yeah, that was the main thing. Was I, I honestly kind of was waiting for that. And for some kind of explanation... Either protecting him, saying, like, he'll slow you down, saying, well, he'll draw too much attention, anything. But there's no explanation whatsoever given and simply acceptance by Jake immediately that, oh, you're right. And I know you're right, like, in my gut that this won't work, which, again, it it, it, it is about to work. (laughs) Right. Like, apparently you were very, very wrong, though. So what does that mean? Yeah, I don't. Again, it feels like King just being like, cheat manipulation! Mm-hmm. Um, God, yeah, I, you know, I, I anyway, well, let's, let's move on real quick, because um, not much left in these two chapters. Uh, the biggest thing is that they, after, like, a supreme effort uh, by Jake being assisted by all the money to open the door, which their, their, their plan is, I love this too, so their plan is... We're going to open it twice. We're going to open it the first... The first time is going to be where Susanna went, right? Mm Mm-hmm. And then we're going to open it back where we went before where Calvin Tower is. Right. 
Um, and they have to split up. And Roland is thinking, like, I do not want to send Eddie after Susanna. Mm-hmm. Because he is just not in his fucking right mind. But there's no way that he will go with that. Right. It's just, I he won't. So I have to go with him. Because, like, he he's going to be the weak link in that quest because of his emotions, and I have to be there to, like, tamper him, essentially. Right. Um, and then he's going to send Jake and Callahan uh, after Tower and Aaron Deepno. Um, but shit goes wrong. Um, there's a weird part where... Uh, Roland, like, notices something about Henshik's smile? Yeah. Where is that? I can't find it now. And there's a weird, like, italics thing where he's like, and he didn't think of it right then, but he thought later about... Or he had occasion oh, here to is. think of it later. Yeah, um... Because Henshik tells him the door will shut on its own, and you've got to be quick, as you were saying before, Natasha... If you want to, you know, get there in one piece. And Roland says, we'll be as quick as we can. And Henshik says, aye, that's best. And put his teeth on display once more. This was a smile. What's he not telling? Something he knows or only thinks he knows. Roland would have occasion to think of not long hence. Right. Which, honestly, I don't remember what that means. (laughs) Um, But, uh... Yeah, so maybe they fucked it up deliberately, or maybe they just kind of knew that, like, shit doesn't go right when you're doing this. Like, planning this much is kind of not not the way to go. Maybe. Um, it's weird to yeah. me. It's weird to me where it falls when he's like, we'll have to be quick, and the guy's like, yeah, 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 for sure. For sure. Right. Sinister smile. That's a weird place for it. I guess maybe that's what it is, like, what you said, like, the idea of planning. When he says, we'll have to be quick, he's like, oh, lol, you think you have control over who goes through those fucking doors. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You well, know, that's kind like, of what that I thought, That shit yeah. just pulls you through, and it picks who goes, and you don't get any damn say. But sure, you be quick about it, buddy. That would make a lot of sense. And as it happens, um, that is exactly how it goes down, because... Yep. Uh, the first stop, which is New York, uh, is the one that sucks in Jake and Callahan and Oi. How about that? How about that? I'm so Um, glad Oi is still with Jake. And I really hope that nothing happened to him and that he doesn't get, like, speared on something. Because don't think that I forgot about impaled Oi in some vision from the pink (laughs) thing. Because I did not forget. No. Didn't forget. I'm just living in fear of that. Uh, Pretty much constantly over my head wondering, is this the chapter? <laughs> Jake and Callahan were shot like bullets like bullets from a gun. Shot into... Uh, damn it. Shot into a darkness filled with the exotic sounds of honking horns and rushing traffic. In the distance, but clear, like the voices you heard in dreams, Eddie heard a rapid, rapping, ecstatic voice, street-bopping its message. Say God, brother, that's right. Say God on 2nd Avenue. Say God on Avenue B. Say God in the Bronx. I say God, I say God, bomb. I say God. Is that from something? I have no idea. It just says, the voice of an authentic New York crazy if Eddie had ever heard one. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, man. Oi zips through two, and then the door slams shut before Eddie can get there, because he's, of course, trying to. He knows that's New York. Yep. Um, and before he can even be all pissed off about it, it opens again, and he gets sucked through. Um, he smelled pine trees and heard the distant backfiring of of what sounded like a big truck. Uh, something, something collided with the side of Eddie's head. For one brief moment, he was brilliantly aware of his passage between worlds, then the gunfire, then the killing. Yeah. Which I'm like, all right, cool, you're just going to throw that in there, all right. This guy, I swear to God, he gets on my damn nerves. <laughs> <laughs> that's about all, that's the thing that I think of immediately now. It's just like, 
Oh, man, you're getting on my nerves, King. What do you think about Stephen King? He gets on my nerves. He gets on my damn nerves. And, like, it's not like I don't like him. I do enjoy him. Sure. A lot. Of course. You know? But I think that's why when he annoys me, he gets to me so much. Because I'm like, you're better than this. <laughs> Stop it. I know you. Um, And... I had said so many times in previous episodes how much I like when he drops a little thing and he's like, oh, building the dread. But it's gotten to the point where sometimes it just doesn't pay off. And so I'm starting to resent it a little now. Yeah, instead gotten, of, like, enjoying it. It's gotten pretty fucking over the top sometimes. Yeah. Like, and, and, God, I wish I could tell you that it gets better. <laughs> 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 I really wish I could tell you that. I'm sorry. Oh, boy. Um, well, that's those two chapters. Yeah, that's it. And so, I think we can do another two next week. They're short enough. All right, cool. Um, yeah, well, we could probably do three if we wanted to. Let's do two, though. How much does that add up to? Uh, two is better? Well, let's see. The chapter we read... So, according to, in my book... Those first two chapters were 45 pages. Okay. Chapters three and four would be uh, 32 pages. Chapters three, four, and five would be um, 54. Hmm. I mean, I'd be cool doing three, but do you think that the arc for three is worth it, or is it... Let me uh, you know let I mean? me check it out real quick while you're doing your thing. I'll get back to okay. you. Okay. Um, I want to say hi to new patrons and also thank everybody for bearing with us as we uh, got back on schedule with the new year. Um, we had been going to start last week, but Miles had a conflict, and so we took that first week off, which actually has wound up working work has wound up working out pretty well for me. Um, due to a massive fuck up with my website. I want to ask all of your forgiveness because somebody hacked me and gave me a bunch of malware. Um, Krista, bless her goddamn heart. This girl, she has been the biggest fucking help. I, she just, yesterday I woke up. It was one of the worst goddamn days. I woke up late because my phone charger was dead. So my phone alarm did not go off because my phone was dead. And I had a horrible, horrible headache. I got myself out of bed. I went to check my email on my computer like a goddamn peasant. And there's a message from somebody that I was supposed to have met with him that morning, even though I did not know that. And they're like, well, where are you? And I'm like, God damn it. So the whole day started and then my cat knocked over a vase of flowers and I'm trying to deal with my website and I get on the phone with Krista and I'm like, Krista, should I do this? Should I do that? Because I don't know what the fuck I'm doing. Like, just straight up. And Krista's like, how about you just go to bed and take some ibuprofen and I will do this for you. And I'm not going to lie. I just started to cry Aww. because I couldn't handle it. It was just one of those moments where all I needed was somebody to be like, I'll take care of it. And sometimes you just need that in your life, you know? I mean, absolutely. Jesus. It's just, it's hard being a grown-up, man. And everybody just, you know, thinks that you're going to take care of everything all the time. And nobody can take care of everything all the time. But also, I'm not good at asking for help. And I'm not good at accepting help, especially when I can't compensate people. Because people deserve to be paid for their work. And I don't like just asking people to do shit for free. So I don't, you know, I ask her for help, but I don't want her to just take over because I feel guilty. But she was just like, no, please, this will be, basically, she convinced me by saying, it will be easier for me to do this for you than to try and explain to you how to do it, which is probably true. Um, so, yeah, Krista, thank you very, very much for that. I love you so much. And she is, like, at this moment working on getting that shit back online. So, uh, you know, we'll see if it's up by the end of the week. But um, I'm going to have to switch to, like, a new host and upload the whole site, 
over again. So it's probably going to be a little while. So just bear with me, everybody. Super, super sorry about that. Um, and I want to say hi to new patrons. I'm having kind of a weird thing, though, because, like, my um, my old patrons are out of order. Normally when I click on, like, the start date, um, it shows me like, uh, most recent to oldest patrons. And I have like a little chart that shows me who did I read last week? So I know where to start from. And the people that I read last week are not on here at all. Everything's out of order. So I'm sorry, everybody, if I'm forgetting someone, but I'm going to do my best. Um, because it looks like the most recent one that's here is Sanja Seibold. Uh, Myrie McKinstry, uh, Lizzie in the Ocean, Robbie McNally, Robin, Robin McNally, Charlotte Colburn, and Kelsey all just became patrons. If I missed you, my apologies, because it seems like the way that this, um, setup is leaping around it's not the way that Patreon normally shows me patrons. Um, I think we've got Kimberly Freeman, Erica Olivares, Eliza Scruton, M- Monica Dominish, Hannah Corwin, Grace Elizabeth, Mole Paul to no, Mole Paul 2010, and Dr. Trek Wizard, which I feel like I read last time. <laughs> so I think that I've got everybody, but my apologies if I missed you because I don't know, Patreon's doing this a little bit differently. Um, and I also wanted to check if we had any new reviews, and we do. Oh shit, we got one new review, buddy. Woo! Five stars by LJ Fetacoma. That is. I don't know if it's meant to be feta coma, but I would completely love a feta coma. I love feta, man. That uh, is great. Five stars from the U.S. I started reading the Dark Tower series again after stopping in high school and went looking for podcasts to help me get deeper into the text. The show is great because they don't spoil anything from later in the book or beyond, which helps me go chapter by chapter and not miss anything important. Natasha is a great host, and you should listen. Thank you so much. Yay. I'm a great host, too. <laughs> He is a great host. Guys, make make sure to leave some more views about how shocked you are that Miles isn't angry and hateful. <laughs> Just make sure to do a couple more of those. They really <laughs> warm the cockles in my heart. Um, but yeah, I'm really excited to see. I've, I've gotten kind of like an upswing of people liking the Facebook page and liking the... Um, the Twitter feeds and retweeting me and stuff, it's just gone up, uh, and I'm not really sure why. If, like, there's something has happened and I got shared somewhere, but I'll take it. Um, so welcome to everybody if you're listening and you're new. And, um, I am really excited to be offering something as a podcast network that I have yet to really find a lot of others that do unspoiled type stuff that people can like listen along with except for harry potter that's become like a much more common thing now yeah um because i set the stage baby i'm gonna take complete (laughs) credit for that one do it um but i have a friend who just started reading harry potter for the first time and she's posting on facebook about it and it is kind of adorable she read the first one and she said she finished it with Sarah with uh, tears in her eyes. Her name is Sarah. Uh-huh. And I was just like, oh, shit. I can't wait. It was the first one. She's now started the fourth one today. I was like, oh, snap. It's about That's to go awesome. down. Um, and so I, of course, suggested that she listen to the podcast, even though I try not to self-promote too much on friends stuff because I find it rude. But like there are times where it's just really appropriate. Sure. Um, so anyway, yeah, guys, thank you for the review. Thank you for becoming patrons. Make sure if you haven't yet to leave a review, because that really, really helps us out in terms of getting, um, spotted on iTunes and you know where to find me, facebook.com slash unspoiled pod, Twitter at unspoiled show and Instagram at unspoiled podcast. Um, I posted on Instagram today because I designed the upcoming, po- uh, postcard for next month which i wanted something that was vaguely valentine's themed 
And I sat there for a second trying to decide what I was going to have it say. I love it so much. (laughs) And uh, I finally went with, damn, listener, are you Lily Potter? Because we worship you from afar and are unhealthily obsessed with you. And it's uh, got a little pair of binoculars encircled with hearts. That hits the trifecta. That hits the trifecta of... (laughs) Uh, relevant to the source material, slightly creepy, and absolutely true. Yay! <laughs> yeah, it took me a little bit, because, you know, there are so many Harry Potter Valentines out there, and none of them felt like they meant anything to the show. So I finally was like, I'm going to just have to write something out, and I don't know what I'm going to do. But I feel like it came out pretty well, and I'm excited to uh, see them in the mail, because sometimes I'll design something and kind of be like, eh, and then it shows up in person on my postcards. And I'm like, this looks awesome. So I'm really hoping that they look even better. They're bright pink. So that'll be fun. (laughs) Um, All right, sir, take it away. What do you got for me? Oh, man. Y'all can find me over on the Smash Fiction Podcast, as I'm sure you know by now. Uh, It's been a crazy um, time for the show. Uh, Over the holidays, we released uh, first... On Christmas Day, we released our 100th episode of Smash Fiction, which is a big deal for us. Oh shit, I didn't know that. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, episode 100. um, It is uh, most of our... We we try not to uh, have our episodes go more than an hour long. Um, This one is an hour and 20 minutes. Uh, So, you know, that was... That was fun to edit over the holidays, over the Christmas holidays. And then... um, the week after, on New Year's Eve, we released the second Smash Bash Championship episode, which is also an hour and 20 minutes long. Smash Bash. I like Smash it. Smash Bash! Number two. That's the one where all the winners of previous Smash Bash episodes get put into, like, a draft, and we all draft a team, and they get put into, like, bizarre situations um, one at a time. We choose which one of them will go into which situation it's really fun and uh it's a great time um i'm just really glad it's edited and out there and done um (laughs) and then this past sunday we released the most recent episode of extraordinary league uh so that just came out i think it's episode jesus 21 21 or 22 we've done a lot of those too man um and that one was actually recorded from my house uh everybody was in town not everybody but most of The Smash Bros. hosts were in town uh, for the holiday, and um, we got to record all together as opposed to over Skype, which was a really good time. It's a really fun episode, so you can check that out. Um, This coming Sunday, we have episode 101 finally on its way, and it is uh, Orko from He-Man versus Rincewind from Discworld. Wow, those are some names. Yeah, they are. It's 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 essentially a battle of who can be the slightly less terrible wizard. So, um, <laughs> look for that one this Sunday. That's a lot of fun. Uh, if you like the show and you want to help us out, um, you can go to our Patreon page, patreon.com slash smashfictionpodcast. You can get access to um, bonus content. If you're one of those people who like just really misses how much I hate stuff... <laughs> and like that was kind of a selling point for you and you want to hear me hate on more shit um every so often i come up with a bonus episode where i talk about something that i hate for a while uh and the december bonus content for patrons only was a bonus episode with myself and dan Malcaron, one of our co-hosts where we talk about the star wars prequels and how fucking terrible they are so oh god um, Yeah, if you want to hear that, then you can become a patron. Um, All patrons get access to that content. At a certain level, you get access to, like, voting on shit. Like, for example, that the the prequels was, like, that was one option on the patron vote as to what my rant would be about. And that was what got voted in. Nice. Um, Barely beating out Lord of the Rings. I was a little bit upset I wanted to rant about Lord of the Rings. Sorry. It's like, it's... (laughs) It's not quite as fun ranting about something that, like, everybody agrees is terrible. You know what I mean? I, that's, I get that. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, anyway, yeah, go over to Patreon, become a subscriber, or become a patron, and I guess become a subscriber on iTunes and shit. 
Um, that'd be great if you could do that. That'd be awesome. Uh, and you can follow us on social media at Smash Pick Podcast on Twitter, on Facebook, Tumblr. Just search for the name, YouTube. We're everywhere. Uh, and then uh, if you want to read uh, some shit that I wrote a while ago, um, go to universesofthemind.com and uh, check out the latest post, which I think is from October. So uh, maybe November. I might have written something in November. That's going to be like, if you're one of the maybe one person who gives a shit. <laughs> um, about this, uh, the science fiction essays that I write on this website, uh, I expect those to become far more regular in the very near future. I have blocked out, um, specific days, uh, to write for the site and specific days to release material. So I'm expecting Universes of the Mind to become at least, uh, weekly very soon. I swear to God, I promise this time. Um, there are also other developments potentially in the works that I can't talk about right now. We, we just, we're back to this well for me. Um, but as soon as I can announce those, I will do so. Sweet. Oh yeah. And you should go to the Odyssey storytelling podcast and listen to that because I do that too. Uh, I host and edit the Odyssey storytelling podcast and you should go and listen to it because there's some really great stories and most of the time it's only 10 minutes long. So, you know, it's pretty awesome. And then once a month it's the full episode and it's like an hour and 10 minutes long. So it's great. Hmm. Right on. Well... I'm trying to think if I have any more announcements. Um, I just recorded the um, the We Free Men by Terry Pratchett. Oh, fuck yeah! So that was really fun. Um, I recorded that one with Bitches from the Buffy show. Nice. And coming up for February, which is Black History Month, I'm going to be reading Why I'm No Longer Talking to White People About Race by <laughs> Rennie Edo Lodge. That will be an interesting show. You must be doing that with Rashawn, right? Yes, Rashawn. Okay. I put the thing on like the uh, the co-host group and was like, "All right, pick books that you want, guys, off the list." And Rashawn's <laughs> like, "Um, duh, February, yeah, please, for sure." So I'll be very interested because uh, I saw some people went and tried to buy it on Amazon, and they said that it was sold out. Wow. Um. So apparently, it is quite po- popular. I'm gonna search right now and see if that's still true. But you can get. The audiobook, which I have an Audible subscription, and the audiobook is only five hours long, which I was really surprised by. Um, so, you know, it's kind of a quick listen. Like, if you have a road trip, you'll be able to run through that shit in one shot, probably. Nice. Um, okay, so paperbacks uh... on Amazon, it says this item is only available from third-party sellers. Yeah. So, yeah, you can get it used, though, and it is in hardcover. Um, but yeah, that's really surprising. That's interesting. Yeah. I'm, uh, I'm on for Neverwhere, right? Yes, sir. Fuck yeah. Yeah, so I'm, uh, I think I, I, I did read on this, on this show what I'm, what the book club books are going to be, right? Uh, yes, you did, yeah. Okay, I just want to make sure that I did that whole thing. Um, um pretty sure you did, yeah. Uh, yeah, I had been like going uh, mid putting them up on the website with the links and everything when the site went down. So, so um, uh, quick story about Neverwhere and your Yuletide book swap. Okay, um, awesome. So uh, I was unfortunately not able to be a part of the Yuletide book swap because I I came in late. And I'm just like not responsible enough to actually sign up for any kind of mailing list. Okay, um, but I did talk to Sharon and like we love the idea, right? Mm-hmm. And we just kind of loved the idea and didn't think much of it much of it after that. So uh, Christmas is coming around, and we're going over to see her family. And we're like, motherfucker. Like, our plan was to get our family members, like, little picture books from our wedding. Okay. That's cute. Because it's, like, a nice, you know, thing that we can just knock out. We get, like, five of them. And, like, we're still going to do that, but we hadn't done it in time. So we're like, shit, what do we do? We're fucking broke. <laughs> and yeah. and we don't and it's like the day of or like the day before christmas maybe it was two days before so we go over to the local uh used bookstore and we just get everybody a book right and uh and we go to sharon's parents house for christmas and we explain the yuletide book swap thing as kind of a way of like oh yeah it's this great tradition we just didn't run out of time and have no money <laughs> You sneaky snakes. So, uh, so then we come home and, uh, and give each other our presents. 
And you'll never guess what Sharon and I got for each other. Did you get each other Neverwhere? Well, we got each other books. And and I actually got her Neverwhere. Um, because I had owned a copy of it and I thought she would love it because she loves gaming and Neverwhere is my like in my opinion the best gaming book. So um, I had actually lend it, uh, loaned it to her, and she left it on an airplane while we were on vacation. Oh shit! Um, so I actually got her like a super nice like hardcover illustrated author's preferred text version of it. Ooh. So that was one of the books that I got her. But uh, I just thought it was hilarious because like we didn't even discuss this beforehand. We just got, got each other books, just like we got everybody else books. I love that. <laughs> that that's. That's a, a love story right there. It really is. Yeah. Yeah. For those of you who don't know what we're talking about with the book swap, um, for patrons, somebody had shared on Facebook that um, I think it's called Jola Bokaflod for in, I, was it Finland or Iceland? Um, well, anyway, it's a tradition to exchange books as gifts so that you like spend Christmas Eve curled up in with a like brand new book and uh i shared this and people were like all about it and i was like why don't we do something like this for unspoiled and people were really excited about it and then megan walsh who is a patron and listener was like i can help organize this and i was like okay and she's like, and by help, I mean do everything. And I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> and she basically, like, spearheaded the whole thing and wrote the, like, the forms for people to fill out and uh, paired people up with partners could, because it wasn't an exchange. Like, it, it's not like you sent it to someone and that same person sent something to you. Everybody got mixed up and paired with someone different. So um, I got paired up with somebody and then I got a amazing box from... Jennifer Faust, she went crazy. And uh, just thank you, Jennifer, because that shit was impressive that she managed to fit it all into the little box that she did. The poor mailman was coming to my door, like bent over, <laughs> trying to carry the thing. And she bought, she gave me five books, first of all, and made sure to do all short stories. And it's just like I've been reading... Um, the Language of Thorns, which is one of the ones she sent, and it is fantastic. Highly recommended. So, yeah, if y'all are uh, not a patron, you should be, because we do shit like that. We're yeah. having a good time. There's Megan, all kinds of stuff going on. Megan, if you're listening to this, I want you to know that if you organize the whole thing again next year, then, like, you and I have to become friends somehow between now and then. Because I need the person organizing this to be okay with, like, getting an email from me, you know, a week or two after the deadline. Oh my God. Saying, like, shit, I just remembered to get back to you. The thing, the thing about it is that if, like, I think if we had been prepared, we might have been able to, because there were a couple people who didn't find out about it until late. And... We might have been able to pair people up, but the tough part is sometimes the people who find out late are international and getting something shipped in time is yeah. like, you know, uh, Nate Swanson, his partner was from New Zealand and Nate Swanson just got his package in the mail today. So, nice. you know, luckily today is also his birthday. So it worked out. Um, oh, but happy yeah. birthday, Nate. Yeah, happy birthday, Nate. Major, major supporter. And uh, basically the guy who got us the finish line for our trip to Florida. So thanks again for that, Nate. Nate's a great dude. He helps us out over at Smash Break, too. So. Nate the Great! Yep. Um, also, I just so, wanted yeah. to mention that one of the books my wife got me was a, a massive hardcover uh, graphic novel containing the entire Grant Morrison New X-Men run. So for those of you I who know what that means... I completely lost you there, buddy. All right, fine, Com it's fine. You said containing Grant Morrison. It was, uh, no, Sh Sharon got me uh, a massive graphic novel. Like, it's huge. Mm -hmm. Like, it's a big hardcover thing that contains the entirety of the Grant Morrison new X-Men run. And for those of you who know what that means, you'll know why that's awesome. And I'm very happy about it. Yay! I, it sounds like we both uh, raked it in for Christmas. Christmas was pretty great this year. I got to mm -hmm. be honest. Christmas was, uh, 
I, I'm surrounded by by very generous people, um, and uh, and I appreciate their generosity, and I wish I could do more to be generous back to them. But then that's not really how generosity works. So it's fine. Yeah, you know, I feel you on that though. That's something that I think about all the time. Like this year, with uh, I did Owen's birthday up more than usual. And we had yeah, you did. Our, and we had our trip to Florida and Christmas all within the space of a month. And so by the time Christmas came, I was really, really wiped out. And I really wanted to buy my co hosts gifts. I really wanted to send you guys at least a little something. Like last year I sent everybody um bookmarks and stuff, you know? And a bookmark is such a small thing, but when you're buying it for 15 people, that shit really starts to add up really fucking quick. Yeah, it does. And I just could not make it happen. I was just like, I'm sorry. But it's the kind of thing that, you know, I'm like, I know that you guys don't care. I know that you're fine. But I also, like, want to do it just because I want to. <sighs> yeah. And uh, it can be a little frustrating to want to be more generous than you can physically be. But, yep. you know, what are you going to do? Yeah, babe. Not much. Exactly. That's what you're going to do. Not, not much. What you can. You're going to do what you can. Anyway, on that note. <laughs> Thank you, everybody, so much for listening. Hope you've been enjoying the show. Don't forget to leave us a review if you have been. And we will see you next week with, what did you decide, three? Oh, yeah, I should probably say that. So uh, let's do three and four next week. Okay, just two. And then we'll do, yeah, we'll just do two, because five and six go together really well. Okay. And what I think it's going to be is it's going to be like three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then everything after that's kind of going to have to be its own episode. Every chapter. Okay. (laughs) They're not. Listen. Don't get me started again. I'm sorry. Every stanza. (laughs) Fucking stanza. Get out of (laughs) here. Toodaloo, motherfuckers. Spoiled Network Podcast.